Hi guys, my name is Tiffany and welcome back to another video. So in this video, I want to talk to you guys about how to deal with difficult families. the term difficult in a very loosely termed word just because for some people difficult may mean something else and everyone defines what difficult means in different ways and so I kind of want to share with you guys at least through my experiences and what I have learned um, working on what it is like to interact with people that are a little bit more challenging, um, families that you're gonna be working with and how to address those situations. So I'm going to tell you guys straight up honestly that I've had experiences on the unit where people have warned or told me about a certain family. Um, this is just specifically to the NICU because obviously I am a NICU nurse and I've only ever worked in the NICU. So I don't know what it is like interacting with um, families with adults, but in the NICU, of course, the environment is a very extremely daunting place. You have your baby that is in the hospital and no one ever wants to experience anything like that. No one ever wants to be a NICU parent. And personally for me, I don't have kids or anything like that. So I can't even imagine what it's like to witness my own kid in the hospital. And I'm sure it is not a pleasant experience. So when I have people warning me and telling me about this certain family being difficult or telling me that this family has been challenging, causing trouble, drama, all these things. Of course, my first instinct and reaction is to kind of guard myself up and I start getting very nervous, very afraid because now, of course, your task and your daily things that you have to do is already challenging enough. Doing your patient load is already challenging enough. So when you have families that are very emotional or need more emotional support or in a sense difficult, then it starts to worry you, right? And I have a lot of people telling me all these things or I hear gossip around the unit about certain families and things like that. And then when I get that patient myself, I become very hesitant. I become very nervous going into it, not knowing what this family is like, not even interacting or talking to them. So it is human nature to want to think those things. But I want you guys to really think in your head and imagine yourself in their shoes and what it is like for them to be in that experience alone. So always try to remember that when you go into it at first, when you hear these types of things going on around the unit, that try to really view it with a very faint eye and trying to go into it as if you were experiencing it yourself. So for me, I try not to let those things get to me. I try not to let people's words or the things they say about other people get to me because then that's that can affect how you provide care, right? as much as you don't want it to be. Sometimes it's going to discourage you and scare you and you don't want to interact with the parents because you're seeing how other people are talking about them and it starts to make you afraid. Um, but for me, like I said, I try to see it as if I can relate to them in any way that I can, even if I can never. I want to be someone where they can feel like they can trust and come to. So for me, what I always try to do is I notice a lot of times, at least in NICU, parents are very hesitant just because they are not aware of what's happening. And I think that's the first thing that causes them a lot of stress because they're, they have people going in and out of the rooms, not introducing themselves or not addressing the parents and doing things, talking about the patient in words they can't understand. And it causes them a lot of stress. I can't even imagine that if I were walking in a unit and no one is talking or saying hello to me and talking over the patient and saying these things that I don't understand. It's like a foreign language to some of these parents. And it can be a very scary things. So for me, at least when I try to go into my patient room, I will always introduce myself to the parents and ask them if they need anything. A lot of times they just want someone to kind of talk things out with. If they have any questions, kind of at least give them an update on what is currently going on, at least to your extent of your knowledge. Because I have patients where I don't know what's fully going on in the picture unless I have time to read back further into the notes. But a lot of times I get a report and I just go straight into the room. So I haven't had a chance to read up on my patient at all. And so I kind of, tell them what I have heard through my report and that this is the plan 
that is expected for my shift and that if anything were to change or if anything was to happen that I will notify them and let them know. A lot of times this give parents at least a little bit more ease that this is the extent of the knowledge that I know and that if anything were to change or occur that they will be notified immediately. Because a lot of times we have parents where things happen and no one has ever told them, no one has ever updated them. So when they come in, they're fully surprised and shocked and that's where um, anger happens. That's where they start getting upset and things like that because no one even told them what was going on. And that's totally understandable. And that can be the cause of a lot of stress for some of these parents that they may take it out on other people. So please keep that in mind when you go into these rooms that they are just as stressed. They didn't want to be here. They don't want to be in this environment and that you just trying to update them on as much to your knowledge and keeping them in the loop is what's going to relieve a lot of stress. And another tip that I have is verbalizing everything you do. I have gotten to the habit, even when my parents aren't even there and I'm talking to my patient, my little baby that probably can't even understand anything I'm saying, I still verbalize all the things that I do just because it gets you in the habit of doing those things and it makes the parents feel way more at ease knowing that you're not going in there and doing all these things and fumbling around in there and you're not telling them what's happening. So for me, when I go in and I'm about to do a blood pressure, I verbally say out loud, I'm about to do a blood pressure on you. Hopefully you stay still and I can get a good blood pressure. Once I check my temperature on my patient, I say whether it's good or bad because a lot of times parents just want to know is it okay? Is it normal? And they don't really care about the number, but they want to know at least is it is it fine for the patient? And so I'll say, yeah, you have a good temperature or you're a little bit too cold. Let's wrap you up a little bit more and we'll check your temperature again in 30 minutes. So I like to give time frames on when I do things and verbalize things that I do. Like I'm checking a girth, I'm ta- changing the diaper. All these things, I verbalize it out loud to the patient. Um, and to the parents and that way they're fully in the loop and understand what's happening. And the next thing, another tip too, is getting the parents involved as much as you can. A lot of times parents feel very hesitant because they see you going in there. They don't want to interrupt your flow. They don't want to mess with anything. Um, they're so afraid about all the wires and all the tubes and things like that. They don't want to cause any trouble, but there is some extent that you can get them involved. Even if your patient is super critical, maybe just doing small little tasks like telling the parents, maybe just putting your hand on the baby's foot or on the baby's um, parts of the body to just kind of comfort and console. Even just letting the parents do that already is enough for some of them and that they feel content that they're being involved somehow. And that can relieve some stress for them as well and that they're being involved with their with their baby. So even just things like that, small little things, even if you get them to change a diaper for the very first time or getting them involved by giving, letting mom or dad um, feed the patient with a little pacifier and a little um, breast milk drop, like just something small like that, getting them involved is something that can make their day. And what I try to do too is to get my parents um, to feel comfortable on the unit is taking pictures. So for something that I enjoy doing as a hobby is taking pictures. And so I try to do that on the unit for my parents as well. Every little milestone that occurs in the NICU is something that we celebrate. And so if the parents are able to come in, I try my best to take a group picture for them. That way they have a memory for the day. Or um, if the parents has changed the diaper for the first time or they're bathing the patient for the first time, I'll try to do a video recording for them. That way they have that memory for them and that makes them feel more comfortable being in the NICU, knowing that the nurses are, they're able to interact with them, that they're kind and they can be comfortable around us. So that's what I try my best to do as well for my parents, get them involved, keep mementos for them, every small little thing, have them be a part of as much as possible. And another thing I have as a tip as well is just be human. That's probably the first and foremost thing that I can probably say for you guys is that we are all human and we, in the end of the day, no matter how much this is still our job and something we have to do and something that is part of our task and things like that, these parents, these families, they're human too. And so just having conversation with them. I notice a lot of times in order to ease some of these families, literally just having a basic conversation about something completely irrelevant can help ease them a lot in their stress. Like for example, I had a family where people were telling me that this family is super difficult. They're very needy. They just want a whole lot of things. Um, To me, as much as, yeah, that can be a very annoying task for some people, 
I just do it because honestly, it doesn't really bother me. If I have the chance and ability to, I can grab a blanket, I can grab them some water. That is something that isn't going to be troublesome for me just because if I have the ability to, I will. Like for example, if I'm super busy or a patient is extremely critical, then you know we can delegate that task for later. And I can tell the parents like, sorry, I'm currently busy doing this right now, but I can definitely get you that later on. Or you know what? Before I even attempt to have my parents ask me, I ask them what they need. And that way, because I'm available and I'm free right now, I can grab the stuff so when later on, when I am actually busy, at least I've grabbed them the stuff that they wanted. So there's nothing they really need from me at this point. So I love to go into my patient rooms, introduce myself and ask them, is there anything you need? Are you staying the night? I can grab you some extra linen, some blankets. Um, would you like some water? I can grab you some water or um, ask the mom if she needs any pumping supplies, breast milk, bottles, labels, any of those stuff. I try to ask them in advance and then so that way when they have all the supplies they need then there's not much they need to ask from you and so when they're asking you out of the blue it's probably something that is super important and necessary but other than that if they've if you've given them what they need usually a lot of times the parents are like nope we are pretty good and we don't need anything else so i try to ask them in advance before they even have a chance to ask me what they need and that way they feel comfortable, they have the stuff that they need to, they don't have to bother you about anything or whatever. But yeah, like I said, being human is should be our first step. And this is probably a lot of reasons why people wanna be nurses in the first place is because we wanna give back to other people and we forget that aspect of it. We forget that the people that come into hospitals are humans just like we are. And of course, there are gonna be times where we are burnt out, we are tired and we're busy, we're stressed. But in the end of the day, kindness is all we really need and for for me at least i'm going to honestly tell you that when i have these difficult families or people that tell me of these difficult families at the end of my shift i don't feel probably as stressed out or probably as scared as i was before starting my shift because when someone can tell me all these things i'm going to feel stress i'm going to feel tense before even starting because you haven't even met the person yet but if you just go in there with kindness and treat them with respect, talk to them as if they are human, interact with them, get them involved, all those things are probably some things that are just so basic that people can overlook because they have things to do that that can ease a lot of stress for people. So I haven't really experienced what it's like to have a difficult family. And to be honest, I have a lot of patients that people would consider difficult. And to me, they, they really aren't just because I just communicate with them as if they are my friend or someone I can just chit chat with. And just having basic human connection is a lot of things that we just need. And especially in a stressful place like a hospital, we have to really remember the root of everything. And that to us, it may seem like a job, but it becomes more than that. And remember why you went into this in the first place. So. I'm hoping that this kind of gives you some insight on what you can do and how you should really view this experience. Don't get discouraged just because someone tells you that this family is challenging or difficult or whatever. Go into it with an open mind and really connect with them as if they're your own family. Just because a lot of times these people that come in here don't want to be here. And of course, they're stressed from the environment alone. So then you just being the kindness the human heart of nursing in the first place and interacting with them in that kind of way is really what's going to help ease a lot of these families and a lot of these patients. So I hope this helps answer your question and I hope this eases a lot of you guys out there and that to me, no family is considered difficult for me. It's really how you approach the situation and how you interact with them. You can change a lot of people's perspectives and a lot of people's outlook on what it's like to be inside a hospital if you are the light of kindness in that hospital so really change people's lives not only through doing physical interventions but change people's lives through the emotional aspect of it too and all it takes is for you to be human and all it takes for you is to provide that kindness so hopefully this video is helpful to you guys and i'll see you guys in my next one bye